What's going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Nowak and this is the Small Mouth Experience coming back at you guys with another technique specific video. And this is the most requested video that I've had for all of these technique videos so far. We're gonna be talking about this little dude right here, this hair jig and how to fish it to catch giant smallmouth bass. And what's so unique about this is it is a very old school presentation. It's a very old school approach to catching giant smallmouth that kind of got brought back into the limelight a couple of years ago when a couple of the top finishers from the St. Lawrence River event on the Bassmaster Elite Series used a hair jig to catch absolutely giant smallmouth bass. So it's a really old school approach, recently brought back into the limelight, but I wanna give you guys all of the information you guys need to be more successful on the water when throwing a hair jig. Now, before we actually dive into that, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that reached out sent messages or even just thought of the mid-Michigan community. If you're not aware, we've experienced some historic levels of flooding. Um, we got a bunch of rain and then Wixom and Sanford dams both failed. They both breached and basically flooded the entire area. Now I personally was very lucky. My mom experienced some flooding, but most of my family stayed pretty safe. But there's a lot of people that lost everything. They, they lost their homes, they lost a bunch of property, um, and just terrible terrible times right now in the mid-michigan area so please keep us in your thoughts and prayers over the next couple of weeks next couple of months as people try to cope and as people try to rebuild their lives from this terrible flooding um, and i just want to say thank you to everyone that's prayed and thought about us so far it means the world and i know we're going to come back stronger and better than ever now without further ado we're going to dive into this thing and the way i'm going to do this is the same way i do for all of my tips and technique videos talking about where when and how, and then we're gonna actually move into the baits and the gear that I use to be successful and confident on the water. Now, if there's a certain technique or tip or topic you guys want to see me talk about, find that comment section and let me know down there what you guys wanna see in future videos. I have a spy bait video, a drop shot video, and some other videos that I, I kinda of want to do planned to go out very shortly, but I'm trying to keep these time of year relevant, things that you can actually take on your body of water right now to go out and chase giant smallmouth bass. So let me know what you guys wanna see because it makes sure I'm making the right videos for you guys that you guys actually want to see. So find that comment section and let me know what you guys wanna see in future videos. Now before we dive into the where with this bait, I really wanna break down what makes this thing so effective because at first glance when you look at this thing, it looks really dumb. It looks really stupid and the first time you throw it out into the water, you're gonna to say to yourself, what fish is going to be stupid enough to eat that bait? The key here is actually in the fact that this bait has a very do nothing presentation. There's no vibration, there's no noise. It really just swims really slowly through the water column and draws fish to that thing and keys them into it. Believe it or not, this has very similar drawing power to like a big swim bait especially in really clear water situations. Now, this is not a dirty water presentation. It's not going to draw fish from a long ways if they can't see it. So you're typically gonna to wanna to fish this in cleaner water situations or cleaner water scenarios. But if you've heard me, if you've been around the channel a long time, you've heard me talk about it with a Ned Rig, a do nothing presentation, something that looks natural, something that looks small and unobtrusive or not really dangerous for bass is going to catch more fish. It's gonna catch bigger fish, uh, similar to a slow moving drop shot which I just think has a very big fish presentation. This is that same way. You're gonna get a lot of really big bites on this thing and it's gonna be really shocking the first time you catch fish on it because it looks so stupid. So where am I throwing this little dude? I'm typically focusing on clean water situations. I wouldn't be confident in throwing it anything less than five foot of visibility. You really want that cleaner water where these fish can see this bait, key in on it from a long ways away and come track it. And that is typically in those cleaner water situations. Like I mentioned, there's no vibration, there's no noise, there's nothing really other than the actual bait coming through the water that is going to draw these fish to this bait. So you want clean water situations. Um, I know it works in Northern Wisconsin, in Michigan, all over the Great Lakes. So typically you want those cleaner water situations where the fish can key in on this bait from a long ways away and come over and check it out and eat it. I'm also focusing around shallow flats, basically the shallow water situations, no deeper than 12 foot of water where those fish I know are coming up to spawn. This is a shallow water presentation. Typically it's gonna be up in the water column. So I'm fishing 12 foot of water or less where I know fish are coming up to spawn, where I know fish are making beds, and where I know they're hanging out post spawn to kind of feed up on the mayflies and those other really small um, bait fish that are around the area. But typically what makes it so effective is its ability to be fish around that shallow water up in the water column, very slowly kind of hanging it in their face. I'm not normally using this as a search tool. I'm not normally just casting this down the bank, moving really, really quickly to search for fish. 
So those areas where I know fish are spawning or making beds uh, is really going to be where I'm focusing my, my time with this bait. I'm not going to use this if I'm just burning down a bank, but if I know there's a shallow flat where fish are spawning or where fish historically spawn, that's when I'm going to pull out a hair jig. So if you're looking for the where, clean water, shallow flats where you know fish are spawning, up in the water column. So no, no deeper than 12 foot of water. Now let's move into the how, because the how is really where I think a lot of people overcomplicate this bait, because it is a very simple presentation. It's probably one of the easiest approaches in bass fishing, and you'll understand why I say that here pretty quickly. There's really two different approaches with this, but they kind of can be rolled up all into one. It's the basic retrieve with this is make as long of a cast as possible, and just slowly reel it back to the boat. Not even slow, just sort of like that slow to medium retrieve. So you're gonna use a longer rod, make as long of a cast away from the boat, just turn the handle at like that slow to medium retrieve, keep that bait up in the water column where those fish can key in on it, come up to it. And you're gonna notice a lot of fish following this thing. That's one of my biggest downsides of this bait is a lot of fish will track this thing and not actually come up and get it. The reason for that, as I mentioned earlier, it has that drawing power. It has that very nonchalant, natural swimming action or natural just straight line action with this thing. So fish can key in on and, and track it, but they're never going to be reactionary with this thing. When you're fishing this bait, that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see, however, is don't pop the reel handle, don't pop the rod. All you want to do is just keep this bait moving in a straight line and that fish will come up behind it and overtake it and that's when they're gonna eat it. That's when you're gonna get the most bites. But if you're popping the rod, if you're flaring the reel handle, making this thing swim all over the place, it actually is going to get you less bites than if you just kind of keep that straight retrieve with this thing. Super, super, super simple, long cast, straight retrieve, areas where you know fish are spawning. The other approach is very similar in a sense where I'm using a little bit shorter rod, but I'm target fishing. I'm using my eyes to like find boulders, find beds, find areas where I know fish are spawning or no fish are hanging out around the spawn and kind of target fishing with it. So casting to boulders, making long cast past the boulder and reeling it just right across the top of that boulder. A lot of times what you'll see is these fish camouflage. Smallmouth are notorious for camouflaging in with the bottom. And so what you'll find is you'll cast to a boulder where you can't visual, visually see a fish they'll come up from behind that boulder and overtake your hair jig. That's where you're gonna get a lot of your bites is off of some sort of isolated cover around those spawning flats. And the best way to do that is by target casting past them, bringing your bait up above it and waiting for that fish to come up behind it. But once you get, once you see that fish, get behind that bait because a lot of times it's a very visual approach. Don't change your retrieve, don't speed up your retrieve, just keep it moving at that slow, slow pace and presentation, and a lot of times those fish will just overtake it and eat it. Another big thing with this bait is the hook set. A lot of people get really excited, they'll hook set like they're fishing a jig, they'll hook set like they're fishing a, a, a swim bait. All you wanna do, it's a light wire approach, these fish come up behind it and eat it, they're typically gonna keep moving towards you, keep reeling till you feel weight, and just sort of turn your body. This hook is super sharp, will go into their mouth. The last thing you wanna do on light line is set the hook really hard and break off or have those fish straighten out the hook. These are strong smallmouth. All you need to do, let them take the bait, feel the weight on your hook and just sweep into them. Now that we've covered the where, when and the how, let's talk about the gear that I'm using to be effective in fishing a hair jig because this is really where I think a lot of people struggle. They're using too short of a rod, they're using a rod that's not limber enough and so they can't make a long cast with this bait, which is super critical. You wanna get this bait as far away from the boat as possible. You're fishing a 1 8 or a 3 32nd ounce hair jig and if you don't have the right rod, you're getting it about 12 feet from the boat you're reeling it back and fish are tracking it right up to the side of the boat, and not eating it and spinning off. So you're saying, well, shoot, that doesn't work. I need something that's gonna get that fish to commit when typically it's just making a longer cast. So the rod that I like to use is a TFO professional walleye series rod. It's seven foot six, medium light, fast action. The reason that I like this rod is because the tip is snappy enough, but light enough to allow me to load up this bait and snap it out there, which will get that bait far enough away from me to give those fish time to eat it. You want a rod to give you the ability to cast this bait a long ways. So this professional series rod, professional walleye series rod from TFO is the rod that I really like for that. Now, when you're looking for a rod, I would go no shorter than seven foot and you want it to be a medium light with a fast or a moderate fast tip. 
that's gonna give you the best casting distance. Now, another thing a lot of people overlook is the reel. You want a bigger spooled reel because it's going to give that line the ability to snap off the reel a lot easier. If you use a really small spooled reel, like a 1,000 or 2,000 size reel, you're gonna notice shorter casting distance. So those bigger size or bigger spool reels are going to let you be more effective. Now this is a Fluger President, I do believe. This I've had this for a long time, and it's a five two to one gear ratio. Really pretty much any gear ratio spinning reel, whether it's a five speed or a six speed is gonna work great. You just want something that you can keep at a steady retrieve with a really good drag and a bigger spool. Again, that bigger spool is key. The longer, softer rod is key to be able to make that long cast and get this thing away from the boat. The line that I'm throwing is 10 pound test braid to six pound test fluorocarbon line. That lighter braid, the lighter fluorocarbon are gonna come off the reel better. They're gonna be able to cast further. Um, and so you wanna use that lighter line. My buddy Durds actually goes down to eight or even six pound test braid to a, a five pound fluorocarbon leader. I don't know that that's necessary, but that 10 to six, is what I really would recommend for you guys for line. Now the hair jigs that I'm using are actually custom made. I tie these hair jigs. It's on a Do It Molds 332nd ounce head. I'm using their production mold. So Do It just came out with this Midwest Finesse production mold, 332nd ounce. And that's what I'm using to pour these hair jigs. It's 332nd ounce is my main, pretty much the only size that I'm fishing in a hair jig and I pour and tie my own. But if you're looking for one that you can buy, one of the cheap ones, if you're just looking to get into hair jig fishing, is a Kalins hair jig. I believe Kalins makes it in 1 8 ounce, close enough. Um, the 1 8 ounce Kalins, pretty in inexpensive, affordable hair jigs that are going to do pretty decent for you guys. Another one of the more premium hair jigs that are on the market out there would be the Outcast Tackle Fighter Fly. They are more expensive, but they have really premium components. They're well tied and they have that 332nd on size that I'm talking about in this video. Um, and I believe they come two to a pack. The colors that I'm fishing are really, really simple. Black with a little bit of purple is my all time favorite or just a black hair jig is my all time favorite. And then during the Mayfly hatch, I like to go to a brown with a little bit of white and then I'll mix in a green every once in a while if I really feel like getting really crazy. But black is probably the one that I throw 90% of the time. I throw brown about 8% of the time during that mayfly hatch and then just randomly mix in this green one on, on occasion when I feel like I want to get really crazy with it. So those are really the three hair jigs. You don't have to go super crazy. If you can only get one, get black and throw this thing, lock it in your hand around that spawn and that will help you be very successful on the water. So one more tip before we wrap this thing up. And if you look right there on the back end of that hair jig, you see that little piece of Senko or soft plastic. This is a very, very key piece of information when you're fishing a hair jig. This is going to give you a couple different benefits. The first one is going to give you more casting distance. Again, you're fishing a very light hair jig that has a very more moderately bulky profile. So that little piece of soft plastic is going to help you cast this bait further. The other thing it's going to do is help keel this bait out. It's going to help this bait run more true through the water column. It's going to get you a lot more bites. If you notice and you fish this thing without that piece of soft plastic, your bait's gonna run nose up. It's gonna run a little bit funky. That piece of soft plastic, that little piece right there is gonna help this thing stay a little bit more true in the water and it's gonna help those followers actually bite this thing because it's gonna look a little bit better coming through the water. So that's just a quick tip to help you guys get more casting distance and put some of these followers into the boat. With that said, let's wrap this thing up. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go down and give it a thumbs up. If there's something you wanna see me talk about in future videos, find that comment section, let me know down there. Or if you have any questions about fishing hair jig, let me know down there and I'll talk about it or I'll interact with you guys down there about what you guys can do to be more effective with the hair jig. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.